recording? We are now. We're recording now? Welcome, Welcome to Two Lowly Investigators with Tyler and Kyle. This guy. That's me. That's I'm me. this guy. So, um, this is our first in five series of videos, uh, all talking about the new Forgotten Age cards. So, we're going to do a, a video for each of the factions. Yeah, there's a lot of content in this guy, so mm -hmm. we decided to split it up. So these are going to be shorter, but uh, more focused videos, as opposed to our pack reviews, which are just the whole thing. So uh, we're starting, obviously, on Leo DeLuca, or Leo, <laughs> Leo DeLuca, I said the same thing earlier. Leo, Leo Anderson is the new Guardian Investigator. Uh, you can see from his stat line, he's got a pretty solid stats um, along the top, uh, his lowest being his Evade or Agility skill, which is one. He's a veteran Wayfarer. I think we have a few other veterans, but uh, those skills don't seem to, or those uh, traits don't seem to matter too much at the moment. Um, so after your turn begins, you can play an asset, reducing its cost by one, which I think, or an ally asset, reducing its cost by one, which is kind of cool. Have an extra action, and the action is to pay for something that's cheaper. Yeah. And this guy wants allies anyway for uh, other reasons, um, because he's a he's an expedition leader. He's yeah. got to have an expedition crew, or else. Leo is super friendly and ally focused, mm -hmm. so. Um, as his yeah. as his elder sign ability says, plus two and search the top three cards of your deck for an ally and shuffle your deck. So. Looking for allies. Um, again, as as far as a guardian goes, he's pretty good. Uh, he's going to stand up to most willpower tests just fine. Um, even though he's got a lower will, he's got a lower uh, sanity. He's still got the four willpower, which is always good on a guardian. Three uh, three books. This means he can probably get clues on his own most of the time. Yeah, he's a pretty decent searcher. And uh, he's punching stuff. He's a he's a veteran expedition leader. He's the only survivor, on, according to a story card, of uh, the. Um, what was it? The the recover the Olselfa Almanac. It ended in complete disaster. So he was the only survivor, which uh, I thought was interesting based off of his his special card, his but he gets for his deck. But we'll talk about that in a sec. So normal deck building uh, restrictions here, like as far as the size, he gets Guardian and Rogue cards. So he's the opposite of Skids from the very first core set. He's the kind of the flip version of Skids. So he's the Guardian who has Rogue zero to th so two cards, and then he can have neutrals. Yeah, and uh, I like his deck building options. They're pretty good. Zero to five guardian, uh, zero two rogue, and zero five neutral cards. They're pretty simple and straightforward. Those deck building so. ones are always the ones that are most simple to build with. As far as like you have, these are your basic options. You don't have to worry about new cards coming out or looking for keywords. It's very straightforward. Yeah, and I I like that a lot, especially for like new players mm -hmm. if you're just joining in. So. Yeah. And then uh, his, his deck building requirements are going to be the same as most other ones, where he gets to include the card that we're going to talk about in a second, plus a basic weakness, which is true for any investigator. So um, his first, the card that he gets, and it can only be in his deck, is called uh, Mitch Brown. It's an ally asset, three costs, and two question marks, icons on the side. He's the sole survivor, which is so is Leo, so they're both sole survivors, I guess. They're sole survivors of different instances. Uh, you can have two additional ally slots, which can be used for non-unique allies. So he gives you you go he goes into your normal ally slot and he means that you can have two other allies. So you got a little expedition going. If you have a uh, Mitch Brown out, you're ready to go. Yeah. And then uh, if you toss in charisma later on, you can have you can have three extra allies because mm -hmm. this guy takes up one of your slots. One yeah. of your slots. So you get two you, you up to you can have two uniques at any given time and then two non-uniques at any given time. If you have all all if you have uh, him out and Charisma. Yeah. So, it's kind of cool. Sucks is the only thing that lets you do that, but... Yeah. Um, and we went through and uh, yeah. took a look at uh, the allies you can get. Um, there's quite a bit on the rogue side uh, that you can get. There's not many s Guardian. There's like a... F yeah, the Guardian cards are like... Um, they're good. They're like the ones you normally see, though. Like that are good with almost any. Then you can have guardians. with this like guard dog and yeah. police officer and um, like then brother Xavier, which I haven't quite figured out yet. So uh, I was like kind of weirded out by that one because I'm not really sure like what you do with him because I've never used him. So that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have like cat burglar and uh, let's see. I did. Yeah, you can have Dario Elamin, who's the um, the patron that we got in the last cycle. Uh, sorry, need to get my search criteria on point. Oh, it's just going to ignore me. Okay, cool. Uh, Hired Muscle, Joey the Rat Vigil, which is the guy who lets you play stuff 
for f as a free action if you spend an extra resource. Uh, Leo DeLuca, of course, I think Leo DeLuca is like one of the key includes in this deck since he yeah. can have him. And uh, Treasure Hunter, which is a new card we'll talk about a little bit later. In the, or we'll talk about it in another video with the Rogue section. But uh, I think, I mean, playing Leo DeLuca for four as a free action at the beginning of your turn could be really cool with uh, Leo's extra action. Um, he can, I don't think he can have anything like... Uh, chance encounter, but you could other people could play that when playing with Leo to get kind yeah. of the asset the benefits of him maybe discarding allies to, to tests and things like that. Um, so it's kinda cool. Yeah. Um, his weakness uh, was kinda interesting. I was reading about it uh, online a little bit, which was it's called Bot and Blood. And you must discard an ally asset you control from play or discard ally assets from your hand if no assets were discarded, uh, it's shuffled back into your deck. So if you're not really playing a lot of allies and you're just kind of keying on a few of them, like this can be either devastating or inconsequential because it'll take your allies out of action, right? Um, uh, someone was like, if you play with no uh, no allies in Leo's deck, this card is just a... It, you mostly, basically only start with one random weakness and you're like, yeah, but like... Yeah, allies are your thing. Yeah, yeah. like why would you do it <laughs> like that? <laughs> yeah, but I, I really didn't think this weakness was that bad because like... Uh, Leo's like just really, you know, solid in the Guardian anyway because mm -hmm. you can just bring lots of guns and guns are good, you know, anyway. And again, so. his his solid stat line is going to let you do most tests that that are going to be okay, like four, three, four, one. That's yeah. going to be good. And you don't need to run away from stuff when you can stab it with the next thing we're going to see. So yeah. on to the knife. normal cards. Yeah, under the normal cards. So survival yeah. knife. Survival Knife is a two-cost asset with a Fist of Cuffs icon on it. It is a Guardian card, and it's an item weapon melee, so any cards that care about that, like you're prepared for the worst or anything that you can use to pull out weapons, is going to help. As a action you can fight, you get plus one damage for the attack, so it's still your base value, which for Leo would be four. Some other ones are five. Some of the ones are less, but you get plus one damage. So just straight up pay two resources to have an upgrade to your basic damage. That's good. Yeah, um, I, I like this card. I like it better than the normal knife. And it basically gives it, it's like a ghetto retaliate for players. And then, yeah, the second part of it is that kind of ghetto retaliate I was talking about, which is after an enemy deals damage to you during this phase, you like, you like, and you like stab him with a knife when yeah. he's like got you tentacled. <laughs> and so it says you exhaust it, and this attack, uh, you fight, attack targeting the enemy, and you get plus two and an extra damage. So I'm putting a survival knife in every guardian. Any deck that can have survival knife, I'm going to put it in. Like, there's. No reason not to run this card. Yeah. It's just, At all. It's pretty good. Uh-huh. I, I can't think of it. Maybe I'm missing something, but there's for two costs and getting an extra damage is great if you're already a good fighter. Otherwise, you get to deal damage when something does damage to you, which means that you're not spending an action to deal that damage, really, right? Yeah. You get to do it as part of this effect as a whole from exhausting it. So once a turn, an enemy attacks you, and you can shank it and potentially kill it. Yeah. Because most stuff is like two... And even if you're only at two fight, having a four test is okay most times. Yeah. So, uh, I think Survival Knife is probably one of like the better Guardian cards that you're getting in this set. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good. And on to our second card, which is uh, one of the new allies that's in the box. Venturer is a four cost asset with a book icon, an ally, and he's got the Wayfarer trait. Uh, he uses supplies, so he's got three supplies on him, and so that's kind of interesting because. Uh, that alone is kind of interesting, the fact that he has supplies, which means he's getting more than just his, like, kind of health and damage. Like, yeah. he's still 2-2 two -two if you wanted to, if you don't even like it, but for 4 it's not as good, but that's kind of cool that he stays around and it's not like a flashlight. Yeah, he just sits there and exactly. does nothing. Um, as a fast action, you can spend an exhaust, spend a supply and exhaust venturer to place one supply or ammo t uh, on an asset controlled by an investigator location. So this plays well into the idea that um, Leo would want this, I think. Because yeah. he could play contraband too, and just start stacking up stuff on like yeah, guns, and exactly. like never have to not use a gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or first aid. Yeah. And what's interesting is it's a fast action that exhausts this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and I do like the fact that he stays out there. So once his like usefulness is done, you can just feed into the monsters. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I keep playing back to Leo because we didn't talk about too much deck building with Leo. We just kind of reviewed him. But with this guy, he's kind of expensive. But the nice part about Leo is that you can, you can have things like burglary, burglary and some of these other cards in Rogue that can give you money, which is kind of new for... Uh, having money in Guardian is something that you don't usually have that often. Yeah. So being able to have some, some access, not a bunch, but some access to these cards where you can, you know, test three on Leo 
and be able to investigate and get three resources as an action in your turn can open up a lot of doors because that basically gives you a emergency cash every turn if you can investigate. Yeah. So uh, with Venture being four, that that's good because he's expensive, but that's kind of cool like that you can be able to do that with Leo. And I think he's and he's not unique, so he's perfect. He's perfect fit in there. I don't know what else. He, I don't know if he. I feel like this card was printed for Leo, but I don't know what other deck you would go in. Uh, cause yeah, I think it would be like mostly a Leo deck. He does cost a lot, and like Leo has the discount on dudes. Maybe like maybe like Caroline uh, from the new book. Like she's like the psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Uh, she has. She's like one who relies, kind of wants to rely on supplies like that because she wants to heal herself. Like Mark would want to do that too. So maybe yeah. this guy's good to throw in as a body to take damage when you don't have a guard dog or something. Yeah, and to be able to just kind of use a. Um, Use a first aid seven times instead of, you know, through a four. Yeah. Which could be cool. So is it worth four? I guess we'll find out. Mm. <laughs> um, now we have... Uh, oh, I did reliable first. Reliable. He's trusted in here. Okay, good. <laughs> reliable um, is a one cost, one experience event with a book. It's got a picture of a gun and a, yeah. like a passport and a letter. And it's an upgrade, which is a first. First, there's been no upgrades oh, yeah. before, so this is kind of a cool new card type we're seeing. Upgrade, fast, and you play it during your turn, and you attach it to an item you control. Super cool. I'm really excited about that because <laughs> that means that you might be able to upgrade a lot of other things. Like maybe you can get a scope for a gun, and you can hit things that are two, two, like two locations away, or something like that. That could be really cool. Or Maybe magical enhancements to items too, like upgrades that are like magical instead of just like oh, yeah. basic. There's a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. there. Um, when resolving a triggered ability on the attached asset, you get plus one to each of your skills. Yeah, I like this because it's like master crafted. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I so put this on your trust on your on your combat knife. Yeah. And now it gives you a plus one on your attack and a plus one damage. And it gives you plus three when you attack out of turn and plus one damage. So, there yeah, you go. and there's just like so many things you can attach it to because I believe. Like, put it on a shotgun and you can have, like, you already have a higher chance of getting an extra damage off a shotgun. Chicago typewriter will hit more often. Um, you can even put it, you could even put it, uh, you can even make a reliable, like, oh, what is it, the uh, ritual athame so you can attack more accurately with ritual yeah. athame. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and reliable on ritual athame actually makes it so. What is it when you... Because you can do something with Ritual Athame that is, like, a, a triggered ability on that. And you could you could attach it to... You could even attach it to, like, books. <laughs> so yeah. you could, uh... So you could, uh, investigate better. Yeah, you could, because you could, uh... Um, anything that you have to test for, like the medical book texts... Yeah. You could have reliable medical textbooks. Yeah, you know, right? look how nice my book is. Item, yeah. I don't know how to spell athame. Oh, there we go. Spirit athame. I'm sorry, it's not ritual. So it says, during a skill... So a triggered ability... I don't know if that's triggered, though. Oh, no, it is. During a skill test on a spell card, exhaust ritual spirit athame to get plus two on that skill test, or plus three with reliable. Yeah. So, I mean, it works all around on any item. So keep in mind for a good play. But you need experience to get it. So I guess that's thematically appropriate, because <laughs> it can't be reliable if you've never used it in anything before, right? There you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, our last um, our last card here is going to be another upgrade. It's trusted. It's a one cost zero experience event that's got a willpower icon on it, or a, yeah, willpower icon. It's a fast play during your turn attached to an ally you control, so the ally gets plus one health and plus one sanity. Uh, I like this. I like this one. Also, yeah, it's it's good for uh, just having your allies absorb damage. I, w I was immediately thinking of Venture, the yeah. Venture ally, because that's a lot of damage you can you can just immediately absorb. Three, yeah. I put him on a put him on a guard put it on a guard dog, and you can do an extra like reaction damage off of the guard dog. Yeah. And he gets another sanity because guard dog usually has one sanity, so the guard dog can take another bullet, is a, mental bullet. Is if you will. guard dog an item? You can upgrade. It's an ally. Uh, yeah. Oh. So that way. Is an item item ally? I don't know. Can you have a, a, a trusted reliable guard dog? Probably not. <laughs> I think you can't. You cannot objectify dogs like that. Wow. Okay. I mean, you guess you could, but you shouldn't. No. Oh. Or the game is saying you can't. <laughs> the game is saying don't objectify uh, so your the, dog. So the last card. So <laughs> trust is pretty sweet. I think again, these upgrades I'm really a fan of so far. I'm very excited to see what else they do. But I mean, 
now that we've seen it on a ally and an item, I guess the next thing we're going to see it on is a treachery card or something terrible like that. Yeah. So uh, that'll be interesting. Maybe we can... There's like an upgrade, but it's like a bad upgrade where you're like... Uh, it like horribly curses your weapon. Yeah. If you oh, use it, you or, just take trauma. It's over like and an over. upgrade for an enemy. Like that's a down. Like it makes them have less health or something like that. Or there's gonna be like a cursed upgrade or something horrible. There's like so I don't for not spoilers, but there's some new weaknesses in this set that are like curses and they are terrible. Like so, be careful when you're playing. Last card we're gonna talk about is the neutral, the one neutral card. So the other videos you won't see this, but we figured I I figured I didn't let Tyler decide. Uh, that a backpack was appropriate for an expedition leader. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah there you go. That's so fair. So throw it in here. <laughs> but the backpack is a two cost asset. It is technically a free item. You don't have to like. You can put it in any deck. It's not just like for a forgotten age. But um, it says after it enters play, search the top six cards of your deck for three non weakness items or supply cards and attach them face down the backpack and shuffle your deck. Cards attached to the backpack can be played as if they were in your hand. If there are no cards attached to it, discard it. So. You can stuff, uh, you know, I like that they put item in supply because I was immediately, oh, search the top three for a non-weakness. Cool, let's put yeah. an ally in here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, so, like the donkey whenever you play D&D like who bag just holds holding. the playbook. It's a play. bag of holding backpack. <laughs> or like an upgrade like card. <laughs> yeah. Or spell cards. Yeah, You're like, oh, look, I found a scope. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, items are supplies. So that could be kind of helpful. Yeah. I think it's cool. Two cost. Uh, you get to have a hand size of three extra. You can have a hand size of eleven now with this card, technically, yeah. if you had it. Um, so it's cool. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that I'll include it right away, but I guess we'll see how devastated we get in the first time we play Forgotten Age, and maybe I'll upgrade to it. Yeah. How, mu how much like discarding our hands are? Mm -hmm. it, it takes up a body slot, which I'm. Oh, that's true. That's interesting. Not too hyped about. Yeah, neither am I. I don't think it should do that, but maybe that's the the balance aspect of it. Yeah. And you discard it anyway after you're done. You just play those cards first, I guess. But if you ever hit an item or that was like a a leather jacket, you're like shit. I guess you play it off of there and replace it as the last action. So okay. But that was the guardian. So um, if you uh, like that, let us know. If you think that we should do more of this kind of like action specific stuff. Let us know. Yeah. Um, but keep an eye out for our other videos. These should all be going up around the same time. So um, this one was, again, shorter, so sorry about that. But I'm not, I'm not sorry about that. I'm going to own this. Yeah. It's right. shorter, and you should like it because of that. Uh, so, yeah. Let us know if you have any thoughts about the Guardian cards or the or Leo Anderson. Not Leo DeLuca. You can yeah. let us know about Leo DeLuca, but that, I, mean, I don't think you want to let us know here. Yeah, Leo Du is not as important. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.